Welcome to the June 2016 edition of What's Happening Around Town for the City of San Bruno. My name is Stephanie Tevis. Keep the channel right here for the next few minutes to find out what is happening around town this month. Summer weekends are perfect for poking around in garage sales. But how are you supposed to find out when and where they will be held? And if you are going to have one, how do you let other people know about your sale? Now you can list and find garage sales on the city's website. Go to www.sanbruno.ca.gov. Hover the cursor over How Do I, then click on Find View Home. Near the bottom of the list, click on San Bruno Garage Sale Postings. This will lead you to an interactive map where you can post your own garage sales as well as find others to go to. The directions on the left-hand side of your screen are easy to follow. Keep in mind that garage sale listings will appear on the map for one week only. This way, the information is always up to date. If your kids plan on going to summer camp here in San Bruno, now is the time to sign up. What sets our program apart from other camps and after school programs along the peninsula is that we provide a sense of community for our participants and quality programming. It's truly the staff that we hire uh, to come in and to work with our children who are amazing role models for our participants. It's a great opportunity for learning, exploration, and imagination in a safe, controlled environment where kids can interact with people from all over. Their leaders are a different age group. Their leaders in training are a little bit younger and a little more like friends, whereas the leaders are more like mentors. And so it really builds those communication skills and social skills that will benefit them for the rest of their lives. And the best part is they don't even know that they're doing that because they're just having so much fun. Each week has a different special activity planned. And if you want the whole week to focus on a specific activity like swimming, tennis, or basketball, specialty camp weeks are available too. Check out the new activity guidebook that should have arrived at your home last month. Have you misplaced the guidebook? Not to worry, you can go to the city's website. Click on the recreation button at the bottom of the page. Then click on the Recreation Activity Guide button on the left. If you still have questions, call the Recreation Division office at 616-7180 or come on down to the office located in City Park. Come celebrate Father's Day at the Senior Center. On Friday, June 17th, a New Orleans-style band called the South Bay Jammers will begin to make music at 10.30 a.m. Dance with friends or simply listen to the music. Enjoy a roast turkey lunch at noon. Even if you don't have kids, come celebrate Father's Day on Friday, June 17th with your friends at the Senior Center. It has been studied and proven that laughter reduces stress. Join the new class called Laughter Yoga starting on Friday, June 10th. This one hour class starts at 10.30 in the morning and is taught by Jessica Huckabay from Care Indeed. The new Laughter Yoga class starting on Friday, June 10th. Enhance your mood and reduce your stress. Although traditionally we celebrate Independence Day on the 4th, here at the Senior Center we will have the Independence Day party on Friday, July 1st. Music and dancing will begin at 10.30 a.m. with the Hot Rods Band. A barbecue chicken lunch will be served at noon with all the fixings. Come celebrate Independence Day at the Senior Center on Friday, July 1st, starting at 10.30 a.m. Kids, are you looking for something fun to do all summer? Join the summer reading program at the library. All kids up to the age of 18 can join. Read all summer for fun and success. Get a free book when you sign up, get a prize when you finish, plus a chance to win a $1,000 college scholarship. There are a lot of special events and activities planned too. On Monday, June 13th, come see the Earth Capades Variety Show. On June 20th, Puppet Art Theater presents Three Billy Goats Gruff. And there will be Thursday afternoon activities from 3 to 4 p.m. on June 23rd and June 30th. And new this year, every day you visit, you can enter a weekly drawing for tickets to local attractions and events, such as the San Mateo County Fair, the Bay Area Discovery Museum, and more. For more information about the summer reading program, come down to the San Bruno Public Library or call 616-7078. People are always asking to see their tax dollars at work. So here are a couple of projects the Public Services Department has recently completed. Over on Olympic Drive, construction has been completed on the new pump station, and it is up and running. A pump station moves sewage away from your home and neighborhood, over the hills, and down to the treatment center in South San Francisco. 
Engineer Wing Wong and Wastewater Manager Dennis Bosch are on hand to give us a tour of the new building and equipment. I'm very excited to tell you about this brand new pump station that we have was built from ground up. The old pump station, the equipment are antiquated, very mid towards the end of the useful life. And the design particular does not meet current health and safety standards. The first station was built in 1961. It's existing backup power generator. Uh, there, there wasn't parts for it anymore. It had um, failed several times, which resulted in sewer overflows uh, in the street in front of the station. And the force main had actually broken twice, which again caused the sewer overflows. Some new aspects of this pump station that the previous pump station didn't have is the ability to uh, have submersible pumps. Before, um, the pumps were in a, in a dry pit or a hole in the ground, and city staff would have to go down those pumps and work in a very tight, confined space, which presented maintenance uh, obstacles and, and problems. These new pumps actually are submerged within the sewage, and then operators can stand above, outside, in normal ground where it's safe, and we crane the pumps out of the, out of the wet wells and we can work on them above ground. Each pump itself can handle the peak weather flow based on historical data. And so we have a lot of redundancy built into this pump station. If one pump were to go out, we can go to the second pump. If both pumps were to go out, we have a third one, spare one, sitting inside the building ready to go on. Overall, it took about a year and we completed in April. The construction has been very smooth and the residents here has been extremely cooperative and accommodating. I'd like to thank all of them and uh, bring this project to uh, success. I believe that uh, the city staff and, and everyone who was involved in, in the uh, architect engineers, um, I believe we did a really good job. <laughs> Uh, the only way I say that is because a lot of the neighbors have, have come up and commented on how pretty it looks. It blends in with the, the surrounding houses. There's bricks on the front. The paint somewhat matches some of the other houses. And so we really wanted to make sure that, that it was something that was going to work for us, but it was also something that was in mind that the neighbors would like and would be, um, be pleasing to the eye. And again, from, from their assessment, you know, we hit our mark with that. It's also running very well, and um, you know a lot of us are proud of it. Thanks, Dennis and Wing. In addition to the work they have completed at the pump station, the water department is moving into the 21st century with the completion of a project which replaced old water meters with new state-of-the-art advanced water meters. Remember last year when workers came by your house and changed out your water meter? The new water meters collect water use data via the internet which means you can access the information yourself. You can find out how much water your household uses monthly, daily, or even hourly to better manage your water usage. All you need to access this information is your water service account number and to set up an online account. Go to the website on the screen and click on the word register at the bottom of the screen. Complete the registration form by inputting your username, email address, password, and security questions. Once you have registered, you can easily navigate through your household's water usage. If you have any questions regarding the water usage monitoring system, go to the city's website or call the utility billing department at 616-7086. Fireworks have always been a particular favorite of mine. Seeing the lights up in the dark sky, hearing the booms and crackles once they are lit, it is fun for the whole family. Many people plan their holiday around lighting the fireworks. And here in San Bruno, safe and sane fireworks are legal, as long as they are used properly with adult supervision and within the appropriate time frame. Know the rules to keep everyone in your family safe this 4th of July. Only safe and sane fireworks are allowed to be used in San Bruno. The use of fireworks is only allowed from noon until 10 p.m. starting on Tuesday, June 28th through Sunday, July 3rd and from noon until midnight on Monday, July 4th. Fireworks can only be used by people 14 years and older or when there is adult supervision. Fireworks must be used on your own private property, not in parks, public parking lots, school grounds, vacant lots, or in the street in front of your house. Keep a minimum of 10 feet away from your house, garage, or other structure when using fireworks. 
extra police will be patrolling the city streets during the week coming up too and on the 4th of July to ensure the public safety. There are stiff fines for breaking the law with regards to the use of fireworks. Keep safe this 4th of July! The San Bruno Police Department is very excited to be part of STEP, the Saturation Traffic Enforcement Program. This program was the brainchild of the Burlingame Police Department. In 2012, they realized that their issues with traffic enforcement were common among many other cities in the county. They had too little staff to police all of their city's trouble spots. The solution? To join forces with other cities in the county to concentrate traffic efforts in one city at a time. This means that traffic officers from multiple cities and jurisdictions are assigned to one city's trouble spots for immediate and tangible solutions to traffic issues. The goal is to increase traffic safety along the peninsula in problem areas through saturated efforts. In addition, the Burlingame Police Department secured grant monies from the California Office of Traffic Safety to enhance STEP with a DUI component. On a monthly basis, STEP works in each hosting city to patrol for drunk drivers. So how will this affect you? STEP will be patrolling in San Bruno on June 2nd and 15th for pedestrian safety and other traffic enforcement. And in the evening of June 10th, the DUI saturation patrols will occur within our city limits. Through the efforts of STEP, communities throughout San Mateo County are experiencing enormous strides towards safer streets. For those of you who have business with the city, keep in mind that city offices will be closed on Monday, July 4th for Independence Day. Of course, fire and police emergency services will continue over the holiday. City offices will reopen on Tuesday, July 5th. It has been my pleasure to bring you this June 2016 edition of What's Happening Around Town. I'm Stephanie Devis. Enjoy this first month of summer.